Hi, my name is EJ Massa. My favorite thing to eat is old meat. Old meat that's been hanging around for a while. Delicious. That's right, I'm talking about dried sausages and dried mussels and other kinds of charcuterie. I've always been interested in making some of my own, but I'm a little bit scared to just hang meat down in my basement, unless it's the body of a man. So I decided to try out these Umai Dry charcuterie bags. These bags form a membrane around the meat, so it lets all the moisture out, but it doesn't let any of the bad smells in. So you can safely dry meat in your regular old fridge. Umai Dry also makes bigger sized bags to accommodate like ribeye roast, so you can dry age steaks at home. But today I'm just using smaller bags to dry mussels for homemade charcuterie. I'm gonna make homemade capicola, or as my relatives call it, gabagool. Hey, gabagool over here. Gabagool, over here. Since this was my first time making this, I played it safe and stuck to the recipe Umai Dry provided on their website. The Umai package comes with a couple things I'll need. First off, Insecure number two, which is a pink curing salt for long-term cures like the one I'm trying. The package also comes with juniper berries as a spice, which really just makes me thirsty for gin. I wish I had some gin. First, I'm gonna need a copa mussel. Now, I went to my local butcher and tried to ask for one, but they had no idea what I was talking about. Finding specific cuts in the Northeast is sometimes pretty hard. I mean, they know what a pork chop is and a, and a ribeye and stew meats, but anything more complicated than that and they get confused. So I'll have to carve one out myself. So I got a whole pork butt from Costco, which includes the copa muscle, along with a bunch of other stuff in the shoulder I'll need to cut off. The copa muscle is sometimes called the money muscle because you can make some awesome pulled pork with it. You can also make a cottage ham with it. But today we'll be making a delicious capicola. The gabagool. I've located the muscle here, and you can find the seam and just cut along that seam and separate it from the rest. The rest of the meat I'll turn into some pulled pork for later, but for now, it's all about this guy. Next, to figure out how much salt and Instacure I'll need, I'm gonna weigh it. It's about 244 grams, or two kilograms, or about four pounds, eight ounces which is pretty much exactly what this recipe calls for, which is four and a half pounds of copa muscle. So that's rad. The weight is important to find out the correct ratio of curing salts and kosher salts for the cure. But since the weight is exactly what's called for in the recipe, I'll follow the recipe exactly. Some of these spices need to be crushed. I'll put one tablespoon of juniper berries in a spice grinder, two bay leaves, and three sprigs of thyme. Close it up and grind them up into a coarse powder. Add that to a bowl and mix it up with 60 grams of kosher salt, six grams of Instacure number two, two tablespoons of coarse black pepper, two tablespoons of sugar, half teaspoon of nutmeg, and two cloves of minced garlic. Although, I just used a garlic press. Don't tell Alton Brown. I whisked it all together, then I dumped the cure mixture onto the meat and made sure to rub it over every surface and into every nook and cranny. Leave no stone unturned. Also, your meat shouldn't be covered in stones. That wouldn't taste very good. There, it's all covered. I put the meat into a standard food saver bag, taking care to add any of the cure that fell off the meat into the bag. Then I brought it over to my food saver vacuum sealer and just sealed it as usual. And then I have a bag of salty meat, which will go into the fridge to cure for two weeks. I made sure to mark the date so I'd remember. 420, blaze it. 420, yeah. This video has been a while in the making. And if you do the math, I was doing Game of Thrones reviews around that time. So I'm just a crazy person who's always making that content, making those EJ cooks on the side. Gotta make the content, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I definitely don't have a problem. While in the fridge, I definitely turned it from time to time, like every couple days. And after two weeks, it looked like this. Bright red and, well, cured looking. Took it out of the bag, and then I gave it a good rinse to rinse off all the cure. After it was cleaned, I laid it onto some butcher's twine, and in an attempt to get it to maintain a cylinder-like shape, I tied it all up. Then I cut off all the dangles. Gotta cut off all the dangles. You can quote me on that. Oh, here's the quote. There it is. Now that it's all tied up, I wanted to add a very light layer of paprika and a tiny bit of cayenne pepper. Don't want to go overboard because the meat needs to make contact with the Umai dry bag, so just a little bit. Speaking of Umai bags, they come with this little vac mouse contraption for creating suction when vacuum sealing, since the bags themselves don't have ridges like food saver bags. 
There's big bags and small bags in this kit. I think I can fit this into the smaller bags. I have the bag opening rolled up so that hopefully it'll make sealing easier because the opening will be less messy. And yes, the meat fits snugly into the small bag. Add the vac mouse in the opening and vacuum seal. I helped massage some of the air out, and I also massaged it because I love the meat. I love it. You won't be able to get a completely tight vacuum like a food saver bag. Just do it the best you can, but don't be a perfectionist about it. After sealing it, I gave it another seal, just in case. There, two seals. Before putting it in the fridge, I just wanted to give it one last weight check, 2,088 grams. We wanna see a 35% reduction in weight in this drying process, so that's about um, 1,358 grams. I place it on a wire rack in my fridge, and we'll see how long it takes. The wire rack is important for ensuring airflow around the meat. The meat needs to breathe all around. It took my meat nine weeks to lose roughly 35% of its weight, this is close enough. And look at that. It's all dried and has an almost black exterior. That doesn't look very appealing. So we'll cut it open and see what we got. <gasps> and it looks beautiful. What a color. Let me cut a slice. It's a little thick. I don't have one of those meat slicers, which makes paper thin slices, which people like. But this will do for now. So here we have the meat. Let me smell it. Oh, it smells so fresh. Mm, clean. It has a, it has a, it definitely has that the cured smell that you'd come to expect from a cured meat, but it's extremely fresh smelling. This is amazing. It tastes like the cured meat you would get at the store, but so much fresher, so much richer, a better mouth feel. Like if you had prosciutto at the store. It's kind of like that, except amp it up like times five or ten because it's just so much fresher. So think prosciutto from the store, but less like dry, um, more of a rich flavor. Mm, this is this is awesome. I you should really try it. Serve it with some fresh baked bread for guests, and by guests I mean just you because nobody else deserves this meat except you. You deserve it. I love you. I absolutely loved making this, and I plan on making other cuts soon, drying other cuts like tenderloins. The Umai dry bags are totally my speed. I don't have to like build a dedicated meat drying fridge with humidifiers in it and stuff. No, I just put it in the bag, put it in my fridge. It's easy and convenient. If you love charcuterie, try it out. You'll like it, it'll be fun. I personally will get more of these bags and maybe try to, to dry age some steaks. Yeah, that could be a good idea for a future episode. Until next time, bye!